this Bina is based on Chochmah. We did not really address this yet. Uh, the Chochmah and Bina element, the Mahus and the Amitsias. Um, right, we will, we have to complete the scene and, and this we'll discuss today. Um, we will, we, we are starting on the line that begins Shalomayla. This is smack in the middle of the page, uh, Tess. Shalomayla, is that? Okay. So we are learning, I was pointing out some very uh, subtle and very uh, principal Indian in Hasidus. Essentially, that there are two elements there is the oir that you comprehend, and there is the means, the level at which you are comprehending it. Like there is bina and zo, bina and, and midas. Mida is they relate to whatever, whatever sense there is in Midas, let's say of Ahava and Yira, of, 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 of Lukus, it is, it will, they, they relate in a, in a very deep and factual manner, to the extent, as we said, that in terms of Midas, <coughs> that actually leads a person to follow through and to act accordingly. It becomes part of the person. And then there is Bina, there is Seichel, the Bina, where the comprehension of Bina is not in such a deep personal effect, experience. But in fact, Bina is on a higher level than the Midas. And what makes Bina higher? It is that Bina relates. What Bina understands, what Bina relates to, is a much higher type of, of, of sense, of oir. Much higher type of man. And this, this we illustrated, and we're still coming in, inside, but we illustrated it by demonstrating these two aspects. We're talking about the clock. The clock has a physical presence, and then there is another presence, which is an intangible presence, a spiritual presence. What is that? It tells the time. A person uses it, it has a purpose. It has a, uh, right, it has a, okay, now, true enough. Okay. Telling the time, okay, since you mentioned it, telling the time is already the function of the clock. This is not even the clock itself. This is the action, the function. But the clock itself, as you're looking at it, there is another, there's a human element to that too. What is that? When you see the clock, do you interpret the time based on? No, we said that that the clock can be lying in a closet or can be in a store being sold. The physical clock is the same, whether it's in the store, in the closet, 
it doesn't make any difference where it is. It's the same thing. This is a tangible presence. When you hang it up, hang it up on the wall, then it represents the human element. You understand? It has nothing to do with the clock. The wall or the clock don't care about this. It doesn't doesn't do any any. It doesn't represent the clock is not the wall, not because it's a clock, but because there's a human being here. You understand? This is like the intangible element. That's like the chokhmah. This has to do with seichel, with with the chokhmah. The idea that the clock tells the time is that would that be like the bina? No. The clock telling the time it's just part of the clock itself? is not really part of the clock. The person... Okay, leave that alone. This is this another, another um, element. Well, the point over here is just a muscle to understand what we are going to say. To show that that there is a tangible thing, like we said, we said another thing, we said that we have um, uh, the tables, we have this, the, um, all the furnishings in here. So there's a physical element of this, the tables and chairs. And that you feel you identify by touch. And you identify it really very, very uh, precisely, very correctly, and, and in, in, a, in a very direct and personal manner. This is a heavy table, this is a strong table, you know, and all the things that you identify. When you put on the light, you don't know that it's a heavy table or a strong table. You know a completely different aspect. What do you know? You know what it's about. You know that this is a mismedrish. The table it gets lost in a much higher concept. You understand what I'm saying? This is Dina. Well, this is what this is what seichel is. This is what seichel is. As far as Bina and Chochmah, that we'll discuss as we get into this. This is seichel. This is the difference between seichel and midas. Midas, I mean, a touch you actually feel it. This touch, lahabdul, a dog also can feel it. But that this is a bismedrish. Never in a million years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or uh, this is a dwelling place, a home. That not, an animal has no such comprehension. Zero. Because an animal has no seichel. Only a human being has seichel. Yes? I it's an old clock. Of the clock. The human element that you have in the clock is interdependent with the fact that the clock serves a function. There will be a human element in a clock if not for the fact that it can give time to a human being, right? I'm, I'm sorry, I missed. There wouldn't be a human element to the clock if it were not for the fact that it tells time to a human being. If it would be just... Yeah, let me, let me explain to you, because he was talking also about time and time. Let's understand this. You put up the clock on the wall, not just because you need to know the time. Because the time you can know, you walk over to the cupboard and, and, and you open it up, you see the time. You walk over, you can, you can lie anything. The clock on the wall um, has, has a, a, a decoration element. But since this is a home where people live, uh, and human beings live in an orderly fashion. Therefore, there's a clock that helps them, that says, this is an orderly home. Do you understand? Do you, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not a practical thing to know the time. You, you have a, a, a watch in your hand also. It's, it's part of the decoration of the home. If you enter a home and you see there's a clock on the wall, you, there's a, it gives you a sense that this is that there is order to this. You understand? This is why you hang the clock on the wall, not in order to tell you time. You understand? So that 
that whole sense is is a psychic is a human thing. In general, to be all coming to this Chokman Bina, in general, in everything, the seichel part is the intangible part, and that is the real important thing. Like we spoke many times, you enter a chasana hall, a dinner, a chasana dinner. So a human being enters a chasana dinner, and a cat enters a chasana dinner, together with him. What does the human being see, or what does the cat see? Anybody? Cat sees a bunch of stuff a human sees. That which the human being sees, the cat will never see. Even if you hit it with a stick, you will never know what that is. You can't teach it to him. It doesn't have the means, doesn't have that sensitivity whatsoever. A human being, on the other hand, if he comes in and says, Oh, what good food. He's an idiot. That's not what it's about. Right? It's, 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 a, it's a simcha, overwhelming simcha. That's what he sees. If somebody leaves a chasen and says, good food, what would you think of him? Right? Mm. Somebody says, I was afraid of a chasana. Ah, that speaks about, it speaks something. The, this intangible element, this is exclusively seichel. This is, and only human being has that. This is what you mean by seichel. You have to understand this, very important, because we're so exposed. Two times two equals to 40 is also called seichel. It's not seichel. That we can count up and say that. But, you know, there are other aspects of this. Okay? So this is what we're what we saying that that Bino is not with the same kind type of actuality, directness, as as zo as midas, elo. Okay, we have the line. The line begins shulamaylo. Elo, except shehu bimchino elyeno yosef. That bina relates and comprehends a bimchino elyeno yosef, a higher bimchino, a higher aspect than midas than zo. What is the higher aspect? that is comprehended in Bina. I know that is Bibhin as Ho'oir Elyoin in the aspect of the supreme higher oir Shemeir Bechokma that that shines in Chokma. And this this all the words here I'm going to translate first and then go back and, and discuss them. But if you don't understand the translation you have to stop me right away. In the beginning of the higher oil, Shemir Bechokmo, that shines in Chokmo. And the way it shines in Chokmo, so what's the difference between Chokmo and Bino? In Chokmo it shines in Gilo Hamahus. In Chokmo it shines in a different type of Gilo, a Gilo, a revelation of the Mahus, of the Mahus of this oil alien, of this higher oil. The meaning of the word mahus, again, I'm going to come back and discuss it. So in Chochma, it there is a gilu mahus, there is a recognition of the mahus of that higher oil. Hine, bibino. So then, bibino, hu bechines ideas hamitzius mizeh. In bino is the aspect of ideas hamitzius, of knowing the mitzius. Mizeh of that oil which is known as Chochme as the Mahus. This is the difference between Mahbina and, and Chochme. Chochme 
has this higher oyer, and there it is begilu and mahus, whereas in bina is the gilu hametzius. I said I'm going to explain. In bina is gilu hametzius, but even though this is mahus and this is metzius. As we will point out, and Mahus and Mitzias are very different. And Chokhmah is much, much higher than Bina. Because in Chokhmah we have the Mahus and, and, and Bina we have only the Mitzias. Nevertheless, this is a Mitzias of that higher oil. And therefore, therefore that makes it Bina, that Bina relates to a higher oil than Midas and so forth. Okay, now we have to try and understand what, what we just now read. Uh, a person, a human being, consists of a goof and an ashama. A goof and, and, and a life force. The goof is lifeless. The goof doesn't have life of its own. There's an ashama in the goof. The goof can be with an ashama, and Ahmad Islam can be without an ashama. When an ashama leaves the goof, they have a goof without an ashama. Now, when the neshama is in the goof, we cannot recognize the, separa- the difference between them. The neshama is in the goof, and we say the goof is alive, the whole person is alive. We don't recognize that there is a goof and there is a neshama. Like, for example, in a computer or a car. A car moves. A computer is able to do all kinds of different things. But there we recognize clearly there is a, there is a metal, the, God, the, 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 the body of the computer, and then there's electronics that makes it move around, makes it do whatever it does. They're completely separate aspects. And when the computer is not active, it is a body without an ashama. It's nothing. It comes to life and it dies every second because it never really lives. It, the, the, the whatever the, that activates it makes it active, but it doesn't make it live. And what's the difference between living and making it active? In the computer or in a car, when the motor um, activates the wheel and the wheel begins to spin, the wheel is the same wheel when it is spinning or not spinning. It hasn't changed. And the force that makes it spin is not in the wheel, it's something it's pushing the wheel. It's not correct to say the wheel is spinning. The wheel is made to spin. It doesn't have an element of, 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 in itself of spinning. The minute you turn off the motor, it stops spinning. On the other hand, a human being, or say a living thing, which is what life is, it is true that there is a goof and a neshama. But the neshama is what's called mislabish, unites with the goof, permeates totally the goof, so that it is correct to say that the hand moves, but the neshama makes the hand move. 
So the Shomri is Mislabish, unites with the hand, and the hand comes to life. As long as the neshama is in the group, the hand actually absorbs the life of the neshama, and they unite completely. And, and, the, and the, there is a life element in the in the in the hand itself. Surely, it's not inside the hand; it's inside the neshama. But the neshama and the group become one. They unite. When you look at a person, even though what you see is a goof, that's what you see, you don't see the neshama. But we can instantaneously say, tell, whether he, the goof is alive or Rahman is not alive. Because the life element comes right through. The neshama permeates the goof, you can tell, it, right away it comes right through. It's not like, we see, the, we see the goof and then we ask, okay, is it alive or not alive? Oh, it is alive. We see right away that it's that alive. Well, the thing is, okay, let me, let me finish, let me finish. Now, there are two ways that we can tell that the person is alive. One is movement. You snap your finger and the person responds and says, oh, he's alive. Any kind of movement, that is clearly a sign of life. Now, functionally speaking, functionally, in terms of action, functionally speaking, movement is essentially um, the expression of life. That's what life is, functionally. Because he's alive, he's able to do things. But then, there's a, there's a much deeper type of activity that's, let's say, thought, where, when, where it's not, it's not um, obvious externally, but, you know, the thought process in the person. This is an internal process, an internal sense of, of his life. Um, that is something which, much, which is much more difficult to detect. A person is, is thinking. Nevertheless, thought is also a movement. It's a movement in the, in the mind. The thought is constantly changing. It's not like uh, a one, one position. It's constantly staying changing. It's thinking, thinking, thinking. It's also an active thing. Then, so, uh, then there is another aspect. There is the fact that a person is living, like we said many times, that a person who is Ahmad al-Islam, the best, last moments of his life, is totally useless in terms of any, any kind of activity. He's not capable of anything. And yet, he is considered a living person. Apidin, and if someone would shorten his life by one second, he is guilty of murder. It's a terrible sin. 
because human life is not measured by the amount of accomplishment that you can do, but just the living itself, that is the value of human life. Now, here is the, 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 the difficulty, and here is the principle, perhaps, as we can identify the difference between the way Chochmah takes things and maybe Bina takes things. Chochma is that supreme faculty of the intellect that can relate to the truth of the Neshom. And Chochma says that there's a Neshom here, he is alive. Bina goes, takes this life that Chochma perceives and attaches to it some kind of functionality. He is breathing, he is thinking, he is moving, that's much lower, some kind of functionality. Chochmah can perceive perceives life in a person without functionality at all. Just the reality of it itself. This is called mahus, and Metzius. Metzius is how something manifests itself, and Mahus is how the truth of something in and of itself. And this is what, what we're saying. Now, In, 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 in that which is perceived in Midas is a completely different level. Let's say there is, let's say, the Midas of mercy. You see a person in distress. You see a person in, in a different situation. And that allows us mercy in a person. It's also connected to his living. He's a living person and he's in distress, so you have, you have mercy on him. But that mercy is aroused because of some circumstance. What he is, what he is experiencing, it's not the, the very element of living itself. This relates to, to, to um, some kind of a state of being. You know, some, some, some functional element. So that midas relate to um, to a much lower level than that which seichel relates to. Seichel relates to the truth of uh, to the truth itself, to the life itself. Whereas midas relate to the state, to the experience of life. This is what, and so, uh, in order to relate to the life itself, you have to have chokhmah. Because only Chochmah can perceive the truth of Nashom. Bina cannot perceive it. But Bina can perceive it on the Metzias level. Not on the truth level, on the Mahus level, but on the Metzias level, on the manifest level. Mida is perceived a completely different thing, a state and an experience. Completely different, different level. Okay, now I took some time to explain Mahus and Mitzias, even though it's not sufficiently explained, but just because this is something which is a recurring thing in Exodus, Mahus and Mitzias. And the principle is that Mahus refers to the essential truth as it is unto itself. Metzius refers to that truth as it manifests outside. In order to know 
that a person, that the life of a person, as the person himself knows it, not as you know it externally, that only Chochmah can perceive. That a person is, that there is life, that he, only he knows internally, that you, there's no manifestation, no manifest state. That is Chochmah. Bina and interpret and, and takes it a step lower and says, oh, this life, there is a constant thought process going on. That's the definition of life. Chochmah does not say the thought process is definition. Life is life, is Neshama Elam. Where would you put the Midas? The Chochmah is... Midas, I said, Midas is the experience of life. How you feel. Are you happy or are you sad? It's a completely different level. But in this marshal of life. Huh? The marshal of life. The life, intrinsic life, that's Chochmah. The practical function of life is going to be there. And what do Midas relate to? Also the function, expression. I'm saying the Midas relate to... Relate to the um, the state of that life, like I said, if a person is happy or sad, is he is he calm? Is he is he upset? You know, this is what Mina refers to. And Mina relates that he's praying and thinking. And Mina relates relate to that which which speaks about the life itself. Like I said, that he's a constant thought process. This is not in any little bit sadness or. Life expresses itself in a constant thought process. As long as a person is alive, he is thinking. That's the cloud, the mother says. It's rabbi, it's, it's rabbi, 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 we all have Chochmah. Yeah, but, okay, but we are very, okay, but you can change. If you get Chochmah, okay, it's unchangeable. But you can say, okay, I'm thinking, but I can make a little bit much smarter than I am. I, I don't think it's available for mental doses. You know, Chochmah be them together, right? I said, yes, that's true. Maybe it's not, uh, What's the point? Chochem. What's the point? Point, you can change. Okay, you got this, you got this. No, you can, you can, you, yeah, you got it, you got it, but you can change okay. how much, how much what you got is functioning. You can understand. Let me ask something. Here, here. You have a muscle. Can you make your muscle stronger or weaker? I would say so. You can make it stronger, right? Yes. But you got it, so what can you do? If, what's the point, point of exercising? The more you exercise, the stronger you become. Yeah, muscle, muscle, but the same thing. The more you exercise your brain, the smarter, the smarter you become. You can be smarter, but okay, but you, you cannot you cannot jump your your limit whatever you got. Jumping is not a good idea, but you can jump. move. You can <laughs> but you can move. Yeah. You can but move up. You cannot make some kind of no, Nobel Prize winners. <laughs> Nobel Prize, okay. Is Mahus is Mahus, I can say a a creation from Chachma? Does Chochmah lead to Mahus? Is one dependent on the other? Chochmah is not a creation. Chochmah relates to, to a Mahus. The Mahus can exist without Chochmah? The Mahus will it exists in Tan Chochmah, sure. And Chochmah recognizes it. We're saying to see if this is not clear. Hmm? So we're saying the other day, basically, that Chochmah is the idea that something represents something higher. Like, it's a representation of something higher. That's, like, you're not focusing the thing itself, the thing is bottled to a higher thing. It's representing something beyond itself. That we know there's a God because we feel that this is a marshal for something higher, not because there is a 
perfection and precision and this and that, but because there is a representation from something higher. So I think you could say that chokma is the ma the maus is like where the thing itself. You are not talking about the function of the thing because the thing itself is just a symbol of something higher. It's not you are not focused on the thing. It's like it's included into a concept, into intangible stuff. And Bina is when you are like focused on the thing and how the thing works. Uh, like the same you're saying with life. We will we will still see. Yeah, a little bit. We will still see. Just wanted to to uh, get into it a little bit. Uh, Bina and Chachma. Yes. And you said three three part, parts of song, seeing someone's alive, right? I'm sorry. The three ways of seeing someone's alive. Right. right. Um, and it's Chachma, three Bina, and Midas. Okay, the highest part, Chachma. And I didn't see that. I just understood it. It's just. Okay. Let, let me. It's a, you know, it's it's a it's a new thing and it's very very deep. But we all understand the difference between the experience of sight and the experience of hearing. Like mentioned all the time, you see something or you hear something described. It's not the same thing, even though it's describing the same thing. If somebody describes to you what the Bismarck looks like, and he describes to you every detail, there's these shelves, and there's these books, and there's these windows, and there's these walls, and there's this color, and everything, every detail. And you come into the room, and you don't find any detail that was not told you about. That was not that was not related to. Do you have a new kind of experience or you don't? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do. Right? How would you describe that new experience? It's can't describe it. It's you can't describe it. Why can't you describe it? The reason you can't describe it is because you can only describe mitzius. You cannot describe mahus. One, one, one second, one second. Yeah. You can only describe Mitzias, you cannot describe Mahus. Again, I don't want to kind of put you to the mill, but we spent the time. Please see if we can understand this. All the chairs and all the tables here tell you that this is a bismedrish. This is the tables and chairs, they tell you that it's a bismedrish. The concept of bismedrish pre exists the tables and the chairs. That's the mahus. When you enter this room and it's empty and you say, ah, it's room, let's make a bismedrish out of this room. What do you mean, Mazar? Without tables and uh, this is a bismedrish. No tables and chairs. It's a bismedrish. Tables and chairs will come or follow. They will only demonstrate, they will only factually, they will only make the mitzvahs, the presence of the bismedrish. You understand? But the reality of it 
is there at the time when you decide that it's me, that it's going to be it. All the tables and chairs and all that doesn't compare to the concept of the this is a bismarck. This is called the mahus. This is the reality itself. The tables and the chairs, they, they manifest. They're giving you the mitzvahs. They're giving you the presence of the bismarck, but not the idea of the bismarck. This is the special gift that the Rebbe Shei gave us of Seichel, of Chochmah, that gives us the ability to know the truth of something. Not just how it acts, but its, its, its essential truth. This is called Chochmah. We discuss about Chochmah in time, and sometimes we say, oh, Chochmah sounds like a Muna. It is a Muna. Chochmah is something that we have, not by development, it is not, not something that we learn about. Chochmah is the Chochmah Shebe Nefesh. This is, how the, this is how a human being sees things. You understand? Chochmah relates to the mahus, to the reality itself. You don't have to learn anything to, in order to have Chochmah. It can, it can be concealed and it can be revealed, but, but it does not consist of, 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 of facts that you can learn about. Bina, this is something where you actually decipher and, and, and put things in, in a kind of a, of, a, of a tangible and perspective, in a perspective. All right. Let's go a little bit further, and it will become even more clear. Kyodua de Bino Nikras Shmiya. As is known, that Bino is called Shmiya, is called hearing. Obishmiya eino yoideya etzem hamahus. In hearing, you do not know the mahus itself. Rag hamitsiyus bizeh. You only know the mitzius of that mahus. What's mean the mitzius? How it acts, how it functions, how it manages its presence. The mitzius exists only when it is present. The mahus exists in, 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 in truth, even if it's not present. Getting a little bit? Can always exist no. in truth even if it's not present? Even if it's not present. Even if, I don't know. <laughs> Let me repeat again. I understand Matthias. Matthias is how, like the Shmia, you get the. Uh, you, know, you, you, you see a picture in your mind of what it's about. And most of them. Well, I said to you, you go into this room, you say, oh, this is a bismedrish. It's empty. Not, there's no presence of a bismedrish. But it is a bismedrish. Mm -hmm. Huh? In any normal distant room, you could decide this is a bismedrish. Yeah. So what? I mean, this is our muscle, okay? So but uh, this, this perception is, is, is in, in Chochmah. One is 
One, the chokma is by the chokma is something which, which is which emanates emanates comes from your own soul. You are creating the chokma. You are saying this is what it's going to be. Bina is that which is relating to the fact to the mitzvahs of things. How do you make that mismatch? All right. I hope we um, got some some insight over here. So Mikomo Koim. So even though in Mitzius, in Bino, we have the Mitzius, and we don't have the Mahus, Mikomo Koim still ideas ha Mitzius, the knowing of the Mitzius who may air ho elyoin. Is from this higher oil, she bebchinas reiyas hamahus bechoch. That is, in the reiyas hamahus, that is, that is, in the choch me is known bebchinas reiyas hamahus. Remember we spoke about, originally we were talking about Zeh and Koi, and we had this marshal where when you see a person, you identify a person frontally by his face, or you identify a person by seeing him from the back. When you identify a person in his, in his face, we say that this, you know, this is the person for sure. This perception that this is this person is not dependent and is not the result of the, of the color of his eyes, the shape of his eyes, the shape of his nose. It's none of this. It's not dependent on Mitzius. You understand? The shape of the nose, the shape of the forehead, everything. That's not, that's not how you, what you're looking at. It's not dependent on Mitzius. Yeah, sorry, one second. There's another interesting phenomenon. You know what a sketch is? A caricature sketch. It has two lines, and you say, oh, that's him. A sketch, you can make, you know, two, two three lines, and that's, that's that person. Where is the person? How is it this person? And every person says, oh yeah, that's him. How is it him? What does he represent with this sketch? His nose, his eyes, his forehead, what does he represent? He represents, huh? 
most important. What does it represent? Most important. It represents the future that represents him, the Mahus. Doesn't represent any features. There's not nothing, no precise different representation at all. What is, so to speak, the, the central, the most, the most um, focused element that the presenter's person is? An interesting thing. It's really a phenomenal thing that every person, you know, the Yimura says, no two people look alike. But even though they may, may resemble each other immensely, in the features they may resemble each other. But they're not the same person. This is a reality. This is, this is something which you see only with your Chachma. This is connecting to the nefesh itself, to, to, the, to the reality itself. This is called Mahus. You can't even ask, you can't even, you can't ask the question, how do you know? You can't ask the question, you can't answer the question. I don't know how I know. I know. And this is an interesting thing that you can take a sketch, you know, it is, and it, there's absolutely nothing of the features of the person on that sketch. And this is him. Amazing thing. But you really don't know how you know which one is each one. That's right. You don't know. You know which, but you cannot put it in words. You cannot That's find right. an explanation of how it's That's you know. right. After, uh, after that, you get used to them, you know each one perfectly. And you can't describe how, how you know it. That's a mouse? I mean... Well, this is, this is the... Right. This is, you know it directly. This is him. That's what you know the mahus. Once you know the mahus. Chochma, this is the thing that the Rebbe is pointing out. Bina addresses, relates to that same level of reality that Chochma knows by Mahus, Bina knows by, by, by Metzius, knows the Metzius of it. Like for example, Bina would say, this one is more serious than this guy. He is more focused. He is more involved in thought. He is more um, open. He is more concealed, which represents itself in this way. Whatever these are things that Bina can I, will 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 uh, identify from the Choch. It's still talking about the mahus of the person. No features that manifest itself. But this is the mitzius of that mahus. This is what the, the point is. That Bina also relates to, to Seichel, to something which is not tangible. I want to give you one more example. I mean, I, I put you through the mill, so I want to give you one example. More simple. Something which we spoke about lately a lot. A very simple principle of one and one is two. And we spoke about it, we said one and one is two. Is it, why is one, one and uh, one and two? Why is not one and one? One and one. What makes them two? They're one and one. They're two separate entities. One and one. Why is it two? So, on the physical level, one and one is one and one. But we in our seichel, which is seichel, recognize that one one is two. One 
Why do we recognize that? Because, because in our cycle we recognize that yeah, this is two cups. These two cups are not just identical. Identical could be, it could be one on one. These two cups are dependent on one, on one another. The reason this cup exists is because this cup exists. What does that mean? These cups were manufactured. The manufacturing of this cup, of, this, of these cups, was decided upon. Why am I, am I going to manufacture this cup? I'm going to manufacture this cup only if I can manufacture a million of them. If I'm going to only make one of them, I'm not going to do it. Right? So they are very closely related. Because the, the, this one exists because this one exists. Otherwise, neither one of them would exist. Therefore, we say there are two. Because there is an original relationship between them. In their very existence, there is a relationship. The same thing we say we have two people. How come we have two people? They're two separate. Two people because the labor should create people. It all comes from the same source. But this concept, this reality, this is in the seichel of the person. The gashmius, there are two cups. If you come from the Mitzvah element, there are two cups. There's nothing, they don't, they don't have a relationship to one another. So, the, the point and the reason I went into all this is because this is extremely important to understand what Seichel is. And how Seichel relates, Seichel of the person, our Seichel, relates us, gives us a chance to, to know things that cannot be known except for Seichel. Like, one on one is two ones, that is not a problem, because two ones you can count one and one. But the concept of two as a unit can only be known as seichel. You can't, by counting them, you don't have them as a unit. You understand? <laughs> by counting them, you don't have them as a unit. By counting them, they are, yeah, you counted two ones, a hundred ones, I mentioned them, but they're all individual ones. <coughs> But the real concept of two, this is a, a human concept in a seichel. We have a, a demonstration of this in halacha. In halacha, I, I mentioned this in the, in the past, right? The, 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 the halacha is that when you when you um, give maaser behema, maaser from behema. So maaser behema means that the cattle that were born this year. You gather them together and, and you give one tenth to the cook. No, the Maisa Bhema you don't give a You take it in the Shalim and eat. So the Maisa Bhema, the din is that you, you can't just count out, you know, oh, I have a hundred sheep, take ten and make a Maisa. They have to go in, you have to bring them into an enclosed area make a single opening, and they come onto the opening, and you count them, one, two, three, four, five. The tenth is my sin, and that's how you continue to count. That's how you my sin. Otherwise, the taking them is not my sin. So, what is the halach? What would be if the opening is slightly larger, and two sheep come out at the same time, and they continue to come out in pairs? They come out in pairs, so you can count pairs, one, two, three, four, five. The tenth pair become mice. So now the question is, since that 
pick, picking out ten does not make it nice. They have to come out. If you take the tenth pair, so it's like you, it's like you picking them out. And they didn't. It's not a, a single a unit coming out. And yet they become mice. What does that tell you? That this pair is a single unit. Logically. This pair is a single unit. How do they become a single unit and they're two separate sheep? Because there is a principle of two. They came out together and they're a single unit. That concept cannot be explained but through Seichel. Scientifically, there's no way you can explain it. Physically, you cannot explain it. This is a concept. which exists only in Seichel Hod. It's sight. It's not, it's not fragmented. It's not, huh? it's not something fragmented that you can start uh, experimenting. It's, it's a sight. It's, it's a reality. That's right. That's what Mahu says. So, could you like say that you have a table, there's 10,000 ways to make tables, and they could be very different. Why you can't count all the tables together and say, I have 10,000 tables in the room? Because the concept surrounds everything equally. Like, that's the Chochmah aspect, the, that's, that's right. intangible aspect that makes everything a cup. It doesn't matter, and you can put them together because there is a higher thing that they represent each one in its way, but it's all the same. That's right. Sometimes we'll, you know, we'll talk about this. You know, what a table says, we talk about it one time. A table is, you know, there's a, a, it talks about a, 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 it's a human element and so forth. Okay, so this is the point. Because this, this Indian is very much misunderstood many, many times. You know, people say, oh, animals have seichel. Animals do not have seichel. Not even the beginning of Seichel. Instinct. In instinct, in, in, the instinct of animals is not Seichel. The instinct, they, they, they act in a certain way. It looks to the human being, oh, wow, this is, this is so smart. But it goes to the Abish, because the animals were created by Midas from the Abish, and they, they represent certain Midas. But Seichel, they don't have. And only human being has seichel. And therefore, since only human being has seichel, he has to treasure it. He has to value it. He has to appreciate. When he understands something, like in seichel, that this is really a godly gift. And this is what makes a human being a human being. To be continued, it says. Oh, what? Well, I was thinking something. You were saying about describing closed off closed eyes. It's interesting. You can't describe anything. You can describe shapes, but you can't describe it as a color. You can't describe